Sound is good. Um, can someone help me check my headphones by saying something? No, I think my headphones not working. Is it? Can you hear? Okay. Can you just say something, someone? You can hear me, but I can't hear anything. Maybe. Can you just make a right? Long hope. Thank you. I can hear you now. My headsets are working. Of course, uh, wonderful. So it's a uh, Thursday morning. KL a bit cloudy, not so good. So the line, hopefully, the line will stay. Okay, now. I think most of you are here. So let's get started. So this morning, we are looking at a, a tutorial on the in, uh, uncertainty, uh, rule-based uh, expert systems, right? And I think this is the first part. So now we are look, actually looking at the rule-based expert system, but fuzzy rule-based. Uh, but in this case, we are looking at the earlier one, which is actually a statistical probability base. So um, there are about, uh, I think, 12 to 11 questions here, 14 questions here, right? So obviously, we will not have the time to finish everything. So before I start, uh, uh, any requests? Uh, have you seen the questions? If you've seen the questions, are there any uh, requests for the which question you want to look at. If not, uh, I will choose. So the first seven questions, which is basically uh, qualitative, basically asking you to describe. For example, the first one is, what is uncertainty? Right, these are the kind of questions. Uh, you can actually look up the answers. Uh, this is basically just a description uh, for you to describe what is uncertainty? So as long as you can uh, give something which is actually uh, correct, I think it will be fine. Uh, of course, if you have any uh, difficulty with that, you can always refer back to the notes, uh, the lecture notes. Uh, of course, also the uh, Michael Nevsky's book, which these uh, lectures are based on. And uh, I, I reckon you shouldn't have any problems. Uh. So uncertainty, if you look at the lecture notes, can be defined as a lack of exact knowledge, right? Something you're not sure, uncertain. Huh? There will another, so with, with, with uncertainty, uh, it will, we cannot come to a reliable or uh, perfectly reliable conclusion. So with uncertainty, we were not sure uh, of the conclusion. Now then we also talk about the sources of uncertain uh, uncertainty or uncertain knowledge, right? Again, with such questions, uh, in the past few years, past few uh, semesters, some students have difficulty answering such questions. So to me, it's actually, uh, what I, ca I can say is that you can uh, look at the question. First of all, talk about uh, uh, the actual definition. And then, of course, if you can, give some examples, even though it's not stated. Right? Again, remember, uh, you are not in uh, even secondary school. You are at the university, and on top of that, you are in the final year. So I think uh, the uh, external uh, evaluators, uh, external evaluators, for example, the Board of Engineers Malaysia, have commented that uh, the students should not be spoon fed. That means that we cannot tell you what to do. Right. So again, in this case, uh, so that's why the question is a bit open ended. Right, what is uncertainty? It's up to you to uh, discuss and describe. Moving along, then we talk about uh, describe when can knowledge be inexact. <clears throat> so you give some examples of when knowledge can be inexact. For example, you have uh, incomplete knowledge due to lack of knowledge. Uh, you have uh, things like the truth is not clear, which is uncertain. Right. We also talk about. Uh, uh, example where we have, uh, I think the example was in the lecture. We have about uh, talk about uh, traffic lights. 
when the traffic light is both uh, red and green, right? So what, what I mean, the rule say that if a traffic light is red, you should stop. But then uh, there's also another rule saying that uh, uh, traffic light is a, there's, con there's contradictory uh, contradiction uh, in, in the system of conflict. Uh. So we have talked about the uh, contradictory knowledge. It's both, both, both uh, true and false. That's why it's called contradictory knowledge. Weak knowledge, <clears throat> which is not uh, crisp. I think we we're looking at we actually complete oh no, we look we have completed looking at that on the fuzzy logic where the <clears throat> knowledge itself is not just either black or white, right? It's not uh, <clears throat> uh, on or off, right? It's not uh, one or zero, right? It is uh, no longer crisp because we talk about uh. Uh, data incomplete. Uh, what what is uh, data, when is data incomplete? We talk about uh, data incomplete. Um, when the, for example, uh, no information is provided. You don't have that information. In the case of, I think we give examples in the surveys. Eh? When when you ask so, uh, the respondent, eh? the person <clears throat> filling in the form, filling the surveys, did not complete certain sections. Eh? Although uh, you, you also said that uh, you don't need the answer for that, so they did answer. What is your age, you know, for example? Uh, and especially in the Western countries, uh, the, especially the ladies will not want to answer that. Huh? So they are very sensitive to revealing their age. So what happens if you want to compile, when you want to <clears throat> calculate, analyze such incomplete data, right? So again, <clears throat> we also talk about uh, we have to give examples of uh, each of them. The uh, <clears throat> the uh, what do you call it? The uh, example of uh, when knowledge is inexact, when data is incomplete. <clears throat> Probability. I think we talk about this. Uh, I think we know all this in uh, in your secondary school. So this is something that, uh, but uh, quite straightforward. Huh? So the just to refresh your memory. The probability of an event, I think this was what, what was discussed in the lectures, <clears throat> is, uh, is the proportion of cases which in, in which the event occurs. So you, you can give examples. Huh? If you have difficulty describing it, uh, <clears throat> think back of an example. For example, the uh, probability of a coin turning up heads or turning up tail. How would you describe that? <clears throat> right. So what is the probability? Then we also talk about uh, uh, that <clears throat> the conditional probability, right? Conditional probability will be of uh, <clears throat> of uh, a given that b has occurred. So b has occurred. I think we will, uh, we will look at this uh, more in more details in the next few questions. Uh, where we have to calculate this. Bayesian rule. Uh, this one is uh, without going to. I think this one, of course, you can also talk about. Uh, I think it's not 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 required. Uh, not required to give a history of a uh, base Bayesian rule. Just you just show basically. Uh, I think it's good enough to actually show mathematically how is the Bayesian rule defined, right? So it's a series of uh, <clears throat> looking at uh, the Bayesian rule for <clears throat> for calculating the uh, <clears throat> conditional probability that uh, <clears throat> event A. Uh, occurs given that B has occurred equals to what, right? So you talk about uh, aspect of it. So then what is Bayesian reasoning? So Bayesian reasoning would be uh, uh, is a basically uh, if we look at the book uh, on page 83 it's basically the uncertainty management uh, uh, technique that may be applied so basically you're using the uh, Bayesian rule to explain certain things uh, and uh, and then use it in expert systems okay so we're talking about uh, I think the rest of them, you just uh, look at it and then go back to the notes, uh, lecture notes, and uh, look at it. Uh, so now let's look at the question number eight. Uh. Let me get my pen. Any questions so far? All right. No. Uh. 
Let me just uh, look at this. <clears throat> okay, so we have this uh, table given here. This uh, join table of join distributions. Let me arrange my things here first. Okay, now I can see this is a table of join distribution between X and Y. Okay, should be fine. My pen. Okay, there you go. Okay, working. Okay, so you can see this is uh, X one. Oh, sorry. Uh, not not working very well. Uh, Okay, there you go. <coughs> okay. So you have uh, X1 and X2, the columns. <coughs> then you have, uh, this is will be, you look at the first row here. What do you see? First one will be the joint probability of Y1 and X1 is 0 0.02. Y1 and X2 is 0 0.3 and so on and so forth. So in question 8a, you ask to calculate the probability of x1. You ask to calculate the probability of x1. So what can you, how do you think I should do that? Or how do you think we should do that? Let me just erase this. <clears throat> right. So we can see x1 so basically uh okay what, what what does it mean to you when i say ask you to calculate the probability of just x1 regardless of or what happens to y why 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 huh i don't care what is y i just want to know what's the probability of x1 so in that case clearly right it will be just all the x1s right so i don't care whether it's x1 y1 or x1 y2 or x1 y3 <clears throat> so i just calculate that so what i get so clearly you just add up everything it becomes <clears throat> 0 0.26 so the answer is 0 0.26 so this one is uh, more of a column. <clears throat> now, question 8b, I want to know what is the uh, distribution, I'm oh, sorry, the, the, the distribution or probability for just y2. So uh, in this case, I don't care what's x1 or x, uh, x whether it's x1 or x2, I don't care. I want to uh, just know what is the probability for y equals to y2. So it will be, now I look at the, <coughs> Uh, rows. So it becomes 0 0.46, right? right? So we, I think you can see how we get that, right? If you cannot see, if you cannot understand, please, uh, <clears throat> this is for you to know, for you to learn, not for me. So sometimes, uh, again, sorry if I'm, I might miss certain things uh, or I might even miss certain mistakes uh, along the way, uh, unintentional mistakes, right? Please correct me if it's something I, I I'm showing here it's not clear to you. Please uh, uh, alert me uh, to, to explain again. Uh. So this one is actually just y equals to y2. Now the last one is actually <clears throat> the probability for y2 and x1. The probability for y2 and x1. <clears throat> so this will be, uh, what, what, let me see here. Uh, I just erase this. Okay, so what do you have here? So y2, x1, this one, right? So this will be the probability of uh, y2, even x1 will be what? Your p for your, 
uh, how shall I put this? Y2, this is the intersection with X1 divided by what? Your, all your X, isn't it? Because the Y2 here is only one part of all the Ys uh, in your X, X, X1, right? So it should be your P of your X1. Now, what is this? So you can see, you can get this now from the table here, the joint distribution, which is 0.14. The other one is, will be, um, which we calculated in the first part, right, this one here. So this is 0.26. <coughs> now, can someone help me punch in the number? What do I get over here? Uh, Maybe take out your calculator because I think if you're especially if you're using your handphone, right? If you're not using handphone, you can use your hand to calculate this. <laughs> What's the value here? <laughs> yep, correct. Uh, Chia, thank you. Uh, so you have five three eight five, right? Can all of you get that? Now, of course, uh, it may be more than four decimal points, huh? So, but uh, I, as a rule of thumb, general rule of thumb i would uh say that uh, four decimal places is good enough huh? so again in the exam uh, uh, you can also try to do that huh? otherwise you see sometimes uh, if, uh, i've seen students just give only one number right so that one is actually i i would say that this is highly inaccurate <clears throat> right because you can see uh, 0.5 uh, can also mean 10 four nine can also mean 0.53 so this is uh, not so good. So please give uh, un, uh, four decimal points uh, for the uh, answer that you have. Okay, so that is your uh, question eight. Okay, any questions? I can go on. Uh. Now, this one is uh, question nine. You asked to uh, calculate, right? again. Uh, so again, if you practice, you would, uh, just like me, uh, I practice every, every year, I have two, two classes to take on this paper because the, the, I, 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 I teach in the first semester, uh, I teach, always teach in the first semester, but the June uh, semester, I also teach uh, later on in the October semester for the other students. Uh. So as a result of uh, going through this every year twice and then for many years, I get to learn and I get to remember. Uh. So one of the things I learned is that how do you read this? You talk about this is a probability of A given that B has occurred. So this one occurs first, right? And again, later on, we'll, we'll talk about this in, in, the, in, the, in the next few questions. Huh? So this one, again, this one is uh, basically very simple. You look at the, maybe because I'm, I'm, I've been teaching this, uh, I think at least for the uh, last, you know, last week and this week, so I can remember this, and maybe some of you might have difficulty, but let me tell you a little trick. Huh? So you are trying to find something that is, uh, of course, the answer is not given, right? Oh, sorry, sorry, my, my mistake here. Actually, it should be the other round, right? Oops, sorry. The, the... Okay, we are trying to calculate this, right? So B over A. So B O A, of course, you're trying to find something unknown, right? So you have to uh, calculate based on something you, that you know. So what are you given? You're given this. So you're given this. If you remember the, uh, so normally you can see, uh, what you don't know is unknown. This is known. Given, huh? Multiply by what? So for me, it's actually multiply by. I, I, I take the this one. That's how I. Notice uh, the equation. You multiply by the uh, the prior probability of just B, and what the when what's what's left behind? This one is is not stated, so you, you just put it down. So that's how I remember this. Now, fortunately, <coughs> the good news is uh, these questions uh, are given at the back of your exam uh, questions. 
So you should look it up. Huh? Of course, look it up. And then, of course, you... But of course, the equation is given in such a form, right? Something like that. So you know what, what this means and how to get these numbers. Huh? So this so this, 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 this question is very straightforward. Just testing you huh? to, to try it out, to, to, to calculate the uh, Bayesian, uh, 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 using the Bayesian rule to calculate the... Uh, I call the uh, probability, uh, conditional probability. Huh? This is a conditional probability, right? So, but I, I think this one, I don't know about you, but to me, it's just numbers. Uh, so again, I, I Personally, uh, personally, I have difficulty trying to understand this. Huh? So you give me numbers, I plug it in. So I still, I still don't know how to use this. I, I can't relate to real life, everyday life. Huh? So, uh, so this one is straightforward. So it's just what you have. <coughs> this one is what? Uh, 0.5. Multiply by the prior for B is 0.4. <coughs> Divided by 0.3. Again, Someone else, can you help to plug, uh, punch in the numbers and see what's the answer? I can see this is uh, actually, I don't need to add. Yeah, thank you again. I was trying to maybe ask some of your classmates uh, so that they are not sleeping. Uh. Right, this is actually, you can see, actually two third, two third was actually point six 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 seven. Thank you again, GA. Uh, so at least uh, GA is uh, making his uh, full use of his fees. Uh. So he pays an amount of fees and then uh, at least he's learning. Uh. Uh, so rest of you also, I encourage you uh, to please uh, participate in the tutorials. Uh, also in the lectures, not to say uh, just, just the tutorials. Because uh, I don't know, but especially these times, uh, <laughs> as I said many, many times, I'm just talking to my, to my PC. <laughs> I don't see anybody, you know, I only see certain things here, so it can be a bit lonely. Yeah. So I welcome uh, any chit chat, if you, if, if I may say so, chit chat from any of you. Huh? Anyway, that's just me. Uh, maybe you all don't feel the thing. Okay. Now, going back to number 10. Uh, go back to question number 10. Now, this is more interesting. Huh? So we have this uh, Dr. M, right? He's a doctor and he knows that the disease called meningitis it's uh, basically a bacteria-based uh, disease. Uh, causes 70% of the patients to have, sorry, uh, let me just erase this. I need the space. I don't want to, what do you call it? I do not want to move away uh, from this uh, question paper. Uh, previously, I used, uh, I used a paint to, to explain. But I find that if I use paint to explain the tutorial classes, I have to switch. I cannot show you the questions. So now it's more convenient. Huh? You can actually see the question there. And of course, uh, again, as I said, in real life, there's always uh, pros and cons. So while I can show you the questions, I cannot, I do not have enough space. So I got to erase all this white space here, right? To, to actually explain, to draw it out, right? Back to this. So you know that the uh, disease meningitis, right, has a uh, seventy percent of the. Uh, so that if you if you can draw it here, uh, be draw it here, uh, meningitis. Uh. Now this meningitis disease. <coughs> uh, so it's a disease. Uh. I think it causes certain uh, problems. Uh, I don't know what it is, but let's say it's, it causes certain problems. At the same time, it also causes a stiff neck. It causes your uh, neck muscles to be stiff, to be a little bit painful. Right? So two things. But this 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 uh, stiff neck uh, is not exhibited in all, all the patients. Only 70% of the patients. <laughs> right? The same thing, uh, I think uh, now... Worldwide, we can't run away from the COVID-19. So we, I can also explain in terms of the COVID-19. For example, uh, like uh, uh, the, the the vaccine, uh, we have, uh, you know, in Malaysia, we have, uh, I think, four now. I think it's three plus one. 
the the fourth one is uh, I think Sinopharm. Uh. But for the vaccine, you find that uh, <coughs> certain people, uh, people will differ, right? Majority will have certain uh, symptoms, but there are some, uh, or rather the other way around, uh, some people will have a very severe symptoms after taking the vaccination. So for example, in, in, in for example in the Sinovac, uh, the <coughs> Sinovac vaccine from China, <coughs> you find that it's actually very mild. <clears throat> Most of the time, people do not have any symptoms, maybe just a slightly, maybe just a slight feeling a bit uh, feverish, uh, maybe an, an hour or so, or in some cases, feeling a bit uh, tired, uh, and then so that's it, right? But of course, there's also on the other side, there's some people have, have actually have a severe uh, reaction to the, uh, to the vaccination, uh, to the vaccine injected. So same thing here. So this one has uh, causes uh, some it causes some problems, which is the disease itself. And of course, it, in some people, this additional symptom, which is a stiff neck, but this only occurs in uh, only seventy percent, two, roughly two thirds of them, right? Or not all, not everybody. Now, what else do we know? Now, the the chances of a person, so probability of a person having the meningitis. Let's go, Rex, let's <clears throat> represent meningitis with the with the letter M equals to. 1 over 50,000. Now, what it means is that <clears throat> that means that if you <clears throat> if you have a sample of 50,000 people, there's only one of them who have the disease. So it's actually uh, a small number. <clears throat> this is point, uh, point 0.2, isn't it? Is it point 0.2? <clears throat> it's a wrong, it's a large, I know it's a large number. Point zero zero two, right? <clears throat> Percent. Right, so let's let's represent it by point percent because we have a uh, here percentage. Uh, so we keep it consistent all percentage. <clears throat> now, what else do we know? <clears throat> we know that. Excuse me, uh, my my throat is dry again. Okay, what do we have? Now the <clears throat> Uh, ignoring uh, again, I think uh, some of you may have uh, let's call it a stiff neck as a. Uh, uh, I mean, that some of you may have uh, experienced this before that have a uh, stiff neck. This is especially very true if your pillow uh, is not uh, firm enough. Uh, that's why I was told anyway. If the pillow is not firm enough, you may end up with a uh, next morning end up with a uh, stiff neck, or maybe when you're sleeping in the afternoon. Uh, not in your bed, not on your bed, but maybe on, on a sofa, on a chair, uh, on somewhere else, and you find it because of the position of how you sleep, <clears throat> you end up with a stiff neck. So this is a property of a stiff neck, it's only 1%. Right? Nothing to do with the disease. So these are the factors given. I, I think you can see where, where we are coming from now. <clears throat> right? So now, uh, <clears throat> you have to assist Dr. M to calculate the percentage of uh, patients that have stiff neck also have meningitis. <clears throat> right, so what are we looking at? What are we trying to calculate? <clears throat> so we want to calculate the, oh, let, me, let me put it uh, somewhere here. Okay, let's try here. Let's call it A, <clears throat> P, uh, let's 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 uh, draw this out first, uh, and then B into P the reverse. Okay, now what are we trying to calculate? Are we calculating A or calculating B? Now let's look at A. What does what 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 does it mean to to us? It means that what is the uh, conditional probability of someone uh, having meningitis also have uh, uh, this uh, stiff neck. B, this one, if you read this, this one will be someone, what's the conditional probability of someone having stiff neck also have meningitis? Right? So what are we looking at? A or B? If you want to calculate someone have a stiff neck, also have meningitis. So this one will be probably of someone having meningitis given that the person has stiff neck. 
This one is probability of someone having stiff neck given that uh, he, he or she has meningitis. So B. So most of you say it's B. Uh, GA says it's B. Ting Dong says it's B. <coughs> Let me see. Uh, maybe I've explained it. Uh, if you look at B, what is the probability of someone having stiff neck given that, no, so what's the probability of someone having stiff neck given that he or she has meningitis? Right? So this one will be uh, have stiff uh stiff neck this is what this one what what is what is uh, what is this uh <coughs> let me see here uh, okay 70 percent <coughs> now what is 70 percent <coughs> the 70 percent is uh let's look at okay let, let's try the other way around let's look at the first sentence here <coughs> talk okay the disease meningitis causes 70 percent of the patients to have stiff neck so this will be given that you have meningitis. Uh, how should I how should I rephrase this? Huh? Um, <clears throat> you have the disease meningitis already have it. Then on top of that, uh, given that you have a this is a probability of someone having a stiff neck, given that the person already has meningitis. Does it ring a bell? Does it mean anything to you? Let me repeat. Huh? This one, 70%, basically says that the probability of someone having meningitis, given that the person, oh, sorry, the other way around. Um, the, ah, okay. The, this is a probability of someone having a meningitis, no. So having the neck, given that the person has a meningitis. So on top of that, isn't it? So this is actually this one. First, first part, just to clarify. Yeah. Look at it. What is the condition here? Condition is the person, the person had the patients have already have uh, meningitis. So on top of that, they have this uh, stiff neck. This one is here. So the property of the person having stiff neck, given that the person already has meningitis, which is this one. <clears throat> okay, because I see that at least two of you has replied. Jiang, oh, okay. is it clear, clearer now? Sorry for the confusion. Okay, yeah. Uh? So, so if this, this is this, so uh, we're left with this. So let me let me look at this again. So, what is the probability of someone having meningitis given the person have a stiff neck? A stiff neck first, right? Stiff neck. So, for, for example, you wake up one morning with a stiff neck, <clears throat> right, and then you find that. Uh, Oh, I do a check and I find that I also have a uh, meningitis. So uh, I, I, I know it's, uh, some of you may hopefully will not complain. Uh, and let me try to explain why. The same can apply to COVID-19, right? COVID-19 is basically a flu, right? But of course, it's a deadly flu, right? So um, maybe maybe I, I shouldn't go, go down that, that direction. Uh. Maybe let's stick with this. Uh. Stick with this. Uh. So we say that uh, you have a wake, wake, wake up one morning, you find that you have a stiff neck. And then you say, do I, do I then have a meningitis? So it's on top of that. If you have this symptom of stiff neck, now to see whether do I have meningitis. So this is what I want to calculate. So this one is, uh, so you can see, if uh, once you decided, ah, right, right, right. Let me try to explain. Uh. Now, the, uh, does it matter? We get which one, correct? Let's assume we, Let's assume only the rest of you. Please pay attention. Huh? Let's assume we didn't. Let's assume we didn't get this correct. Let's assume we didn't get this correct. Oops, sorry. Let's assume we didn't get this correct. So let's assume we get it upside down, right? We get it. We get it upside down. Uh, upside down. <coughs> Okay, upside down. So it, this is this. So we're now to cal we're now calculate this one. 
So rest of you, please pay attention. Otherwise, you can get confused. Uh, uh, if you come back later on, you find that, hey, this is what some, this one, you get confused. This one is what I calculate this. So this one is, if you want to calculate this, what do you have? You have this. Multiply by, as I said before, this, and then this is straightforward, uh, right? Um, what I call that the um, application of your Bayesian rule. Now, what do you get? Now, this is something I didn't calculate, uh, point 0.7, right? Multiply by 1.0 divided by, uh, sorry, uh, this is what, this is, convert this to divided by 100 and 0 0.12345, correct? Okay, so, so help me calculate this one. Punch the numbers, I think this is a huge, huge number. Anyone? <laughs> Long thank you. 35,000. <laughs> right? So, it's a scary number, isn't it? Because the probability is only 1, uh, 1 1.0. So now you have 35,000. Well, never mind. Let, let's see. Yeah? So, I suppose uh, if you have such a number, it will be very uh, not so nicer. Uh, of the examiner huh, to give you a question, which is a trick question, huh, to get a number. But, but but what I'm trying to say is that if you get such a large number, uh, alarm bells should ring in your head. That means that something may be wrong. Huh? So you have something that doesn't make sense. Huh? So the, the, the problem is that because of this, if you have got the numbers, uh, uh, the, get the parts, uh, the definition wrong, or rather your understanding of the question wrong, so you end up with a wrong answer. Let me just uh, go, go back. <coughs> Yeah. So I, I know, uh, I think I also same problem now. Huh? It's not easy to, I have to slowly, uh, we call carefully look at the question huh? so that uh, you get for, it, it can quite easily get for, it, it can easily, what do you call it, uh, uh, make a mistake huh? and, and get the wrong thing. So. Have a stiff neck, given that uh, so you really have a stiff neck, right? And then what's the chance of the person also have also uh, the also right? So it's what what comes later. So meaning that this comes after stiff neck. Right? This one is the other way around. Uh, you have you have a meningitis, right? You have meningitis, and you actually have then some of them have stiff neck. So this is your seventy percent. So now we calculate this one, right? So we have your uh, 0.7 multiplied by your PS, which is 1 point. Is it correct? Uh, let me see. Yeah. Uh, I'll write it out again. Just to uh, stiff neck. No, no, no. Hang on. This is the array round, isn't it? I think I make, I make a mistake here. Let me check. Yeah, stiff neck. This is uh, this. I make a mistake. Sorry. As I. Uh, wait. Hey, hang on. Correct, 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 correct. Huh? So we have your, just now, where will be? So we have this, 70%. We have your, oh, actually we're trying to calculate this one, right? I, well, we can't calculate this one. So we have this, uh, meningitis also have, okay, this is 70%. This is uh, my, uh, this is what, this is my, okay, this is my, 0.7 multiplied by my 1.0. Hey, how, how? I somewhere I make a mistake. Hang on, let me check. Huh? Correct is a uh, multiplied by your stiff neck, then meningitis, divided by your stiff neck. Okay, I think I make a mistake here. I know what happened here. Okay, this is. Hey, hang on. I make a somewhere there's a, I, I myself. Let me try again. Huh? <clears throat> wait, 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 wait. I, I think, hang on, let me, let me, let me take you raise this one. I think that's why I have too many things here. Let's see now. We are trying to calculate this one, which is your 
I already have my mailing. Oh, sorry, they're very wrong again. They're very wrong. Huh? So I already have my. I have a stiff neck. What are the chances of me having meningitis? So this will be P of S over M uh, multiplied by P of M divided by P of S. This is uh, 0 0.01 1 percent, uh, and this is this is a uh, 0 0.12345, right? And then the other one is this is my uh, 70 percent. So it will be. 0 0.7 multiplied by P of M will be 0 0.0002 divided by 0 0.01. Correct? Okay, right. GA, thank you. Uh, so this is what? This is a. Uh, uh, okay, GS1 is a 0 0.00. So it will be 0. Point. If you convert to percentage, can I convert to. So it will be 1 4, isn't it? Sorry uh, for the slight confusion there. The rest of you. Can you follow any questions? Okay, so I move along. So 0.14. Now, what is the now? This is additional. I want to show you that what what is the why is this uh Bayesian rule quite a uh, powerful method for you to to use? Now, this is 0.14 percent or 0.0014. A yeah, is it the uh, point? Your is it zero 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 one four? I get a different answer. Oh, sorry, not yeah, Zhong Zhong Yi. Sorry, Zhong Yi. Can you check? Uh, <coughs> uh, how 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 come you have a point zero one in front now? Uh? I don't have a point zero one in front. Can I check check the Zhong Yi's? Ah, okay, 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 okay. So, I've, so you should get a uh, point zero zero one four, right? And then you convert that becomes a uh, point one four percent, right? What what does it mean? Now look at this, uh. Now, I ask you back. Uh, go back to the question. Now, the chances of someone having the stiff neck, right? The chances of the person having a stiff neck is only 1%. Sorry, it's not 1%. It's actually what? Ah, no, the person, the chances of a person having the disease is meningitis is uh, 0.002%, which is 1 over 50,000. 1 over 50,000, right? Now, when the when the person complains of a stiff neck, right? The now you have a stiff neck, and your chances of getting the disease is what is now 0.14 compared against uh, one over fifty thousand, which is point uh, zero zero two percent. Right, that's what we have. Point zero zero two percent. Right, so you get that. So if once you complain, you have a stiff neck. This one becomes what seventy. That means your chances of the <clears throat> person having the disease meningitis increases seventy fold. Increases seventy fold once you have the symptom of a stiff neck. If you have no stiff neck, the chances uh, the doctor will say, oh, this is very rare disease, only one of 50,000. <clears> when you have this, so that, for example, you want, I want to check, go doctor and say, doctor, can you please check for me whether do I have this, uh, I suspect I may have this meningitis, right? So the chances of, of the of, of actually correct, being positive about meningitis is 0.002%. Now, when you complain that you have a stiff neck and the doing test that is actually increases to now 0.14, which the 70 times more likely now. <clears throat> you see, so that is the one of the, if I may say so, beauty, right? The uh, the strength or beauty of this or Bayesian rule, if we apply in such a case whereby 
it tells you that uh, you know you can give you some insight some uh, information huh, on, on that okay i need to speed up i think um, i have 15 minutes left <laughs> okay now this one will take a more much more time uh, so in this case we have this uh, joint distribution like similar to the earlier case of uh, here question eight uh, but this one is question 11 a joint distribution of the boolean variables which is your uh, toothache your cavity and your catch now what's the catch a catch if you check the tool that the dentist user to actually uh, to, in, to 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 detect whether there's an aching tooth there's a cavity there's a cap there's a what called there's a uh, i mean the, the there's a cavity in your tooth and then actually um, <clears throat> The, the 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 tooth is gone and it actually now it, it goes down to your uh, nerve so once you uh, the, the 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 dentist checks that confirms that there's indeed a, a cavity there uh, once it touches your raw nerve it will cause you great pain so there is uh, basically a, a catch <coughs> so three things here so you have a uh, three uh, <coughs> variables and you have this joint probability of a toothache catch and cavity checking is a cavity right now this sign actually means not right your our boolean not huh? so not too fake not catch so let's look at it first one is we want to calculate what is the property of a too fake again go back to the question eight very simple let's look at all those with a too fake <coughs> so we have <coughs> over here which is what all the uh the part with the uh, just the two fake so you have over here just the two fake right i don't care about cavity i don't care about no no point again help me to calculate this So this should be, if I'm not mistaken, this should be, yeah, correct. So thank, thank you, Lam Ho, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0. <coughs> Now, the next part is a little bit uh, tricky. Notice that this is actually in bold. Basically, it means it's a, a, a vector. So this, what it means is that, <coughs> yes, I also want to calculate for when the uh, cavity is true. <coughs> I also want to calculate if it's false. <clears throat> right, I'll explain that later on. Huh? Let's look at the first case first, <clears throat> which is I want to calculate if it's true. P for my cavity. <clears throat> so P for my cavity will be what? Over here, isn't it? Um, so it should be. Oh, sorry. I uh, should uh, opacity. Uh, no, uh, let me try this one. It's uh, no color, more like it. So this uh, opacity go here, line color will be here, right? Okay. So what do I have? Again, if you can punch in the numbers, you have. Uh, 0 0.108 plus 0 0.012 plus 0.072 plus 0 0.008. Now, what do I get? <clears throat> Let me check. What do I get? I should get. Oh, yeah. Hang Xiang, thank you. Same, huh? uh, correct. So maybe I should change the question next time. Uh, shouldn't be the same. Otherwise, it's the same, same. It's not easy to explain. So, okay, now. Basically, what it means is that this is true, so you get your 0 0.2. Now, how about not true? Not cavity will be, take this part here, isn't it? Because you know that all everything adds up to one. Or the other faster way is what? You just one minus that, right? One minus 0 0.2 gives you 0 0.8. So the answer is like this. So this is true, this is false. If it's given in a uh, what do you call it a bold form, right? So bold form. 
So now I will erase to clear me some space. Now the next one is again same thing. This is bowler. So you have your true and then not true. Huh? Uh, or now the next one is actually look at uh, <clears throat> two fake jointly with uh, cavity, right? So two fake and cavity. What do we have? Okay, two fake and cavity, right? So it will be. So this is P of uh, two fake. your intersection with your cavity. So this will be just this two, isn't it? So this will be 0 0.12, right? So this one is, uh, okay, jointly with uh, cavity, isn't it, right? So you have your uh, jointly with cavity, and then you have all the cavities. Uh, so your then uh, this is uh, two fake and cavity, right? Cavity, so you have here. Now P cavity, we calculated before is uh, 0.2, right? So this will be, two will be this one. <clears throat> divided by P of your cavity. Right, so two fig of cavity, this one we know that this is actually 0.2. <clears throat> Let's see what's the answer here. Hmm. Anyone, this will be. Uh, chip, 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 chip. 20.6, right? This point six, right? So just point six. Okay, right. So again, um, so the flip side will be the one which is false will be, let me just erase this. Uh, I, so this will be point six. And then what's the false? False will be point four. <coughs> All right, so one minus that. The last one, one uh, question, the next question, D. Is the uh, joint priority of two fake or catch? The, the, the is jointly with two fake or catch, All right? So uh, here, if I could erase this. Okay, now this one is too thick or catch. <clears throat> right, so this is, uh, so this one would be basically, if this is A, this is B. So basically you're looking at P of A, um, intersection with B <clears throat> over <clears throat> P of B. So we have to calculate. First one is actually the uh, P of, uh, okay, now we have this uh, P uh, two fig uh, union, isn't it? Or catch, right? Union uh, two fig or catch. So basically, it is what? Two fig or catch. So what is your two fig? So P P P of P of uh, two fig or catch. <coughs> this will be uh, two fig or catch. Now look at it here. So what is my two fig? Two fig will be uh, here, isn't it? Two fig. Just all the two fig. Two fig will be from part A, which is point two. Right now, how about catch or catch? Right, so like uh, what, what are the ones with catches? <coughs> Do 
this one, this one, this one, this one. Right, so if it's just this is calculated already, so I it's not, it can be not. So what's left behind? This this two, right? So you have your so what's the value here that you get? Okay, so this one will give me, let me see what I get. Point, okay. 72144. 72144, correct? Uh, are you sure? Did I miss something here? Ah, correct. Four one six, isn't it? Okay. So it should be four one six. Huh? Let me erase this again. Oops, sorry. So I, where, where am I? Ah, yeah. I reversed the wrong thing. So what, what, what do we get? We get uh, this one, isn't it? Is it? What do we get? Uh? Two or catch, is it? Or catch equals two. Or is it? Uh, yeah, four and six. Uh? Okay, so this is four one six. Uh, this is uh, four one six. Four one six. Now then, we look at your now intersection between your two fig, <coughs> uh, with cavity and your these two, right? So we have your. So now we're gonna calculate this one. Your cavity, which is a join now. Uh, Cavity intersection with your toothache, toothache union with your catch. So it goes to cavity, toothache, and catch. Or catch. Right, just now we know that this is, uh, we calculate this one. So then we know that cavity intersection with a uh, toothpick or catch. So toothpick is these two, and catch is this one. So it's the first three columns uh, of your first row. So what you get? Zero point one zero eight plus zero point zero one two plus zero point zero seven two. Now what's the value here? This one should give you uh point one nine two, right? Zero point one, yeah, nine two, top top top, yeah, correct, right, correct, right. So get that. So um, once you have that, so now, uh, just now we said before, if you want to calculate this one, if it's A and B, so this are A and B, so this one will be your P F your A. Uh, intersection B, right, equals to your <coughs> sorry, sorry, uh, this actually is not intersection, this is actually this one. This is the formula. It will be P of your A intersection B divided by P of B. Right? So P of B will be your two fake or cash, which is 0.16, and then we calculate this one, which is your A intersection B, which is this one. So we, what we have is actually 0 
two divided by zero point four one six, and this is give you uh, what's the value? So it should be I get. Uh, Yeah, correct. Okay. So this is okay. Ah, but again, this one is a, a sort of a, it's a vector. So it will be 0 0.4615. Don't forget the next part, uh, which is the fourth part 0 0.5385. Right, so it's called five three five because this is this is uh, true and this is false. So far, so good. The few of you, the you, sir. Any questions, uh, please, sir? Any questions you ask, please? Okay, let me erase the bot while I uh, have any questions. Please feel free to ask me. Okay, now. That ends the one on the Bayesian rule. Now let's look at the, aut the alternative. Uh, thank you, Simsian. Uh, on the certainty factors. I think uh, Simsian can uh, follow the rest of you. Right? So please, uh, uh, I always believe in uh, uh, the distribution, uh, uh, the normal distribution. There may be a few of you who, who may have a uh, difficulty following. Uh, don't be shy eh, if you have difficulty following. Now this one, some of you uh, in the previous classes uh, have, have some a bit of confusion, right? Uh, let's see whether you have the same confusion or not uh, this morning. Huh? I have, oh, quickly, uh, how much time do I have? I know that uh, about that now, about now. Let me try to finish this one. I think it should be fine. Let me try to finish this one. Uh, I need to run off. You have a class after this? If I cluster this, I'll quickly run through. Never mind. I'll run through this one. Huh? So we have this uh, uh, certainty factors based on this. If, if P is true, then N is true. P is true. I write in the short form. P is true. N is true. But this is only with 0 0.5. Certainty factor. Now, if uh, Q is true, then your N is true. This is 0 0.9 certainty factor. Now, if N is true, then you have your X is true. This is 0 0.99. Now, notice here in this section, left hand side here, this is parallel. So both of these contribute. So logically, uh, the argument is uh, if you have two more than one one event contributing to the outcome of this event here, it should strengthen it, right? As you will see later on. So now we want to calculate what's the uh, uh, certainty factor for X given the following. If P and Q is true, then X is true. So we want to use, look at this. And now again, from your, uh, what do you call it, from your uh, lecture notes. And again, you can check up in a check in your, at the last page of your exam paper, at the end there, uh, there will be a set of equations. Uh, this is also included. So this one is, uh, I'll, in, the, in the interest of time, I won't, I won't explain too much, right? Uh, I'll just write it down. So you can calculate this. Huh? So this is for Bobby. So you plug in all the numbers. So you have your 0.5 plus your point, sorry, 0 0.9 plus a 0.5 minus your 0 0.5 times your 0 0.9. This is only for parallel, this part here, to give you your certainty factor for N. So this will give you 1.4 minus 0 0.45. It will give you 0 0.95. Now the next part here, yeah, correct, 0.95. Uh. The next part here is I want to calculate X. So now for the series, it's very straightforward. So this one will be 0 0.99 multiplied by what, what you obtain here, 0 0.95. 0 0.95, this will give you, what's the, what's the value? Quickly. Now what do I have? This is, uh, I get uh, 0 0.94. Yeah, correct, 9405. Uh. So that's correct. Now. Next part here is that what happens? Uh, okay, the next part is what? What is what? Is, based on this, uh, what is your final decision? If the threshold for x uh, is 0 0.75, so you compare against uh, this is 0 0.9405. Compare against your 0 0.75. So you will act on the final decision. Is yes, proceed. Uh, act on the decision, right? 
act on the decision. Uh, X is in X is indeed true. You you it, it, oh, it's actually higher than point than your point seven five, which is your threshold, right? Next part is what's the effect of uh, R two is removed. So for example, if you think of this as a system, uh, as a electronic system, right? This is actually based on electric system. If your one of the sensors is not working, in this case now, you have your R two is removed, no longer there. <clears throat> so what 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 is the effect? So what is X now? I still want to calculate X, but this time now, this one is uh, not working. So you have your basically 0.5 multiplied by your 0.99, only one, which is what? This is your, what's the value here? 0.5, you have your 0.495, right? 0.495. Right, now, again, apply this. Should I, what's the effect of, uh, if, if I use back the, same threshold. So do I still proceed on the, can, can I still trust the decision, right, on the system? No. Now this is less than 0.75, so it's a, uh, so I will not proceed. So I cannot trust my uh, results now. All the, uh, the, the decision is ignored because it's point, uh, ignore x, right, because it's a uh, less than 0.75. So this is, you can see, uh, first one was what, 0.9, what, this one was 0.945, isn't it? Ah, correct. See, if I have these two working, so you can see that jointly, they actually combine to give me 0 0.9405. Actually, it's higher than the 0 0.9 and higher than the 0 0.5. So you can see, if you have a two of them contributing to this, the same outcome, it will strengthen it even though in this case it's slightly, which is 0 0.9405, right? You have 0 0.9, 0 0.5. But if one of them is not working, you get your, finally you get your point, uh, uh, only 0 0.5, you find that a 0.4. So you can see, uh, if one of them is not working, or think of it as a sensor, so you find that the that changes a lot on your final decision, right? So just check with you, uh, uh, do you, have, you guys have a class after this? Uh, or the now? <laughs> Sorry, yeah? Yes, okay. Okay, now in that case, I'll just give you an answer for uh, this, this answer and then you can go off and try on your own. Eh? This is basically the, uh, what you call it, application of your uh, of your Bayesian. Eh? So straightforward. 1510120. Let me try to, uh, this one is actually, what do I have? 20, 13, 80. This one should be, you should get 20, 13. This is answers. Eh? Go and try it out. Just apply your, um, your Bayesian rule. 80%, 30, 80%. This is 80%. Okay, just apply the, the property uh, based on, on this. You should, you should try, you should get these answers. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I'll run a bit over time. I was, I was going a bit slow. So I think uh, I'll stop here. Uh, I'll let you go for your next class. The one to be, to be late. Okay, I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow then, tomorrow morning for your, for your lectures. Huh? Of course, I'll be here uh, if you have anything to ask. Uh, okay, bye-bye. This is P defect. It's 1.5%. Uh, I'll just write it down. And then you have this uh, P of your production. This, uh, this one, no? 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.6.